I see so many students having problems with color uh, and obviously identifying the sky is blue, the trees are green, uh, the barn is red, but there's no harmony, there's no sense of belonging together uh, in the colors in the painting. And actually, this is wonderfully, wonderfully simple. And once you see the demo, you'll understand it completely and it will solve uh, a significant problem that I see in paintings as I used to travel around the country. This is a painting I did uh, a few weeks ago, I guess, uh, and pretty well pleased with it. Uh, it's a, what we would describe as a colorful painting, I believe. But if you look at the reds, yellows, blues, violets in there, they are harmonious. They belong together for a very logical reason. And that's what I want to talk to you about before we get to the practical demonstration. One of the things I've found uh, that people need to address is having a palette these little field palettes are wonderful to carry around when you're uh, out in the field or on location. Uh, but what you need is a lot of mixing area. And I always like to quote my teacher, Robert E. Wood, who said, limit the colors in your painting, a limited palette, but mix like crazy. And that's the key here. Our subject is this wonderful little church. It was not too far from our hotel in uh, Antigua, Guatemala. Somebody told me it looked like the Alamo, and I guess it kind of does, but it, it's a beautiful structure. Uh, and that's gonna be the subject for our painting. Obviously, and this is an afternoon shot, the light is placed beautifully on the church and very pleased with that. Like some of these, uh, um, I guess they're windows and, uh, and the foliage that we have. Uh, notice the sky is a middle value uh, blue. So that shows off the light on the church. Uh, and that is working very well. This is a very nice tree. It overlaps in front of the church. That works well. It makes it more three-dimensional. I like the tree trunks down here. They play against the dark. Uh, they work fairly well, but I do not like this uh, little teeny foliage that you can hardly see up there. It, uh, uh, it needs to be filled out, and I, I'm just going to make up uh, some uh, uh, foliage uh, and... Uh, and uh, make sure that the foliage gets in front of the, of the uh, church a little bit for the same reason that anytime you overlap things, uh, they become more three-dimensional. And so rather than having the tree uh, by or beside the, the building, we're putting it in front of, which it was. And the same will be true here. Uh, this is kind of a gimme that the best light is placed, but best light and dark are placed on the main character. So that's so uh, that's working beautifully well. But before we start, I always want to go through the photograph and not just uh, point out the things I like, but also point out the things I don't like. Uh, I don't, and they're uh, uh, subjective, I guess, uh, and, uh, and you may agree or disagree uh, with uh, my likes and dislikes. Uh, one of the things, everything in this painting is gonna lead us to this nice uh, doorway, entryway. When we get there, the, the sh all of this is in shadow. The tree is creating a shadow here that kind of flattens the doorway out uh, almost, I, I just always find it much more enjoyable to open the door and have a little light in there. So it says, uh, uh, that, you know, something's going on inside there. I don't like this fence in here. It's a brick or some kind of um, uh, mason fence 
that is real lost in shadow. We've got two figures here. They're both painters in my class and uh, they're very nice people, but they're not in the right place. Figures are never in the right place in a photograph. Uh, and so, uh, and we, we could make them painters. It might be a good thing, but uh, we'll, we are placing uh, figures where we want them to be in the painting. Okay, now the first part uh, is very important, <laughs> but very boring to watch. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to, I want this to be a wet into wet start. So I'm getting the page wet. And when I want you to notice, I use a big brush and I really work the water into the paper and I put two or three layers or passages of water on here. I don't want this to be dripping wet, but I'm working the water into the uh, paper. This is 140 arches cold press, so it accepts the water fairly uh, nicely. This is uh, my uh, two inch uh, Robert Simmons synthetic sable. Uh, and I like the Robert Simmons. I also have the, and I'll be using this a lot. This is the um, American Journey. Uh, this is a half an inch and I'll be using that. I'm sorry, it's three quarter inch. This is a half an inch. And then I'll be using, uh, this is a Windsor Newton one inch flat. Great brush. You can get them most anywhere. They last forever. And uh, it just holds that beautiful snappy point, uh, uh, beveled edge there. So uh, that, and then I'm gonna use a few of my pointed brushes. I use Robert Simmons there, uh, the, copper colored handle. And then I use the American Journey, all synthetics. Uh, synthetics have a lot of snap to them. Uh, and that's why I like them. They, uh, they're great for softening edges. Uh, some people wet both sides of the paper uh, as I'm doing here, and that will make it stay wetter longer. So if you like the wet into wet approach, uh, and you might try it that way. Now I'll be able to kind of comfortably start uh, on this wet page. Okay, so we're using, I'm gonna use the same colors that we used in the, the demo before, Aurelian Yellow, uh, Red Hot Mama. Every time I do that, I get too much. And you see, this is a beautiful orangish color. Uh, but it's a little too pure, a little too uh, clean, I guess, for lack of a better word. So I want it to be a tertiary orange. I'm coming in and just touching in a little bit of cerulean blue into that. And that takes it off of being just a secondary color. So it's, it's just a little more uh, neutralized here. Now, I, I, this is hard to explain as well. Don't paint the drawing on the first go around. I'm painting through things. I'm not trying to capture things uh, with the first application. Uh, I'm, I, <laughs> I don't know why this is true, uh, but it seems like it always works better if, we let this be abstracted. I'm trying to balance. I know where the, the lights are going to be, uh, but I'm trying to uh, balance them here, but to and keep them happening in this area behind the figures. We don't need them to be there. So this is an abstracted uh, passage of, of saved whites with light washes here. And I'm making sure not to just paint the, the drawing. I'm painting across the drawing, except where I want to save them as uh, the figures here. Now that being done, I'm coming in 
and I want to, I don't know why I do these things either, but um, I want to have some uh, flowers in here, and I'm just kind of counterbalancing on the page a few uh, areas where there will be some kind of flowers. I need a little bit of a very delicate green there. So look how easily I can mix that delicate green and place in there. Uh, I'm not trying to control it too much. Uh, that's for the next stage. I'm just placing the colors uh, around the page. And then I'll come in and just have a couple of notes of a little strong. This was just right from the tube, uh, Red Hot Mama, just touching into it a time or two. We may use these, we may not, uh, but it gives us that option there. Everything's blending, soft edge, that's good. Uh, let, me, let me bring that down just a, a little bit farther, farther. And I need a cool gray, brilliant blue. And let me put a little magenta into that. That was too much. There we go. I'm going to start this off. And then maybe let it go a different gray. I'm putting that Red Hot Mama in there so that it's going to blend a little bit as it goes, goes up. And let's let it go cooler down in here. I'm trying to create some negative spaces in here. Well, I've got this, and this is my practice. Well, I've got this color here. I'll come in and select uh, 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 some of that placement of that figure, of that color on one of the figures. And we'll just... Okay. Now, our greens, this is the reason I use the Prussian. I, I don't know if y'all can see, but I've got Prussian over here. I'm mixing a couple of passages. I'm checking to see this is a little bit uh, drying on me. And uh, so it, it's certainly okay. I'll just come back and wet down this area of the painting. You don't have to wet everything. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and wet this down again. It dries pretty fast under these lights and I'm okay with that, but you just have to stop and, and dry them. Uh, I'm sorry, and re-wet them a time or two. And I'm not too, uh, this is the just the beginning of the tree. So I just wanna give it a feeling of foliage, where the foliage is gonna be and then let it go a different green by adding uh, cerulean to it. We'll come in and find just a little, a little magenta and we'll touch into that a time or two that's not not the violet I'm trying to mix that's better and so uh it's it's blending I'm come in put it out a time or two here same thing same green Bring it in up here to start with 
just let it be the first indication of foliage. Oh. And It's running away a little bit. Uh, if you're not used to painting wet into wet, that's gonna throw you a, a bit at first, but uh, the whole key to this is that the page is damp. It's not soaking wet, it's not running away. And uh, you'll just have to practice a time or two. I just find that when I, uh, work it into the page that that kind of keeps the page damp, but it, it doesn't just run away as it's trying to do here. I always quote my teacher. I can hear him. <laughs> I'd ask him so many questions. Uh, Bob, how do you know when it's this or how do you know when it's that? I almost touched into that vibe there. His answer was always the same uh, or almost always the same. Watch the page, Don. The answer is on the page. And uh, so that's what I'm trying to do here is, is react to what's going on. For instance, I just found two or three little white edges here that might work well as a light on the flowers. Uh, and so I'm going to see if I can save them and take advantage of that. And I might be able to, and I might not be able to. Take this and we're just gonna fake, just hint at uh, where a shadow goes across the building there. And while that's drying, I'm going to just come in and touch into the beginning of some of the windows. This is dry now, so uh, it's uh, it's holding its shape. When I get to the figures, I'll carve them out with negative space. I know this gray will work because it's utilized in other parts of the painting. I'm going to take that and these two colors and mix them together and let that be the beginning. It's a little bit different than the wall. That's fine. I wanted that, but it will belong in the painting. Okay, we're gonna maybe come in and diffuse or soften a few edges uh, so they're not quite so cut out down here. Soften a few. And this will be the first pass of the opening. What I do, and this is very effective, uh, 
And I talked to a young lady named Robin yesterday or day before. And Robin, when you had that door, you had it closed. I'm opening the door and I'm just coming in and finding some little uh, beginning of an, oop, I'll cut his head off. Don't want that. I know that doesn't make sense to you now, and then I'm softening an edge or two, but uh, uh, you'll see in probably an hour, <laughs> but you'll see. And I'm just coming in putting other colors into that that I've already got in the painting someplace. Okay. And We'll find maybe green, a little flesh tone. Oh, another thing I do, I wanted to show you, is I'm gonna about to paint the, the figures, heads and arms and all. Uh, this is called, well, in here, this is called top lighting. I'm gonna soften an edge there. Just getting them wet in advance. And because I want the flesh to be warmer, I'm just coming in and touching a little bit of cool into the flesh. Don't have to do it in all of them. And then I'm coming in trying to save a little bit of that flesh where I've got it and the little accent of, oops, oh, he's got a ball cap on. No, I don't want a ball cap. These are the first washes. Don't want them to get too uh, cut out here. So I'm just starting with a few different colors letting them kind of blend together. I, I kind of like to just let them evolve a bit as the painting progresses. If one's warmer, the one next is cooler. And a different mixture for this one. Just the beginnings of our figures. And I also want to come and touch in, soften up a time or two so they're not looking uh, quite so cut out. And I also think of in terms of uh, complementary colors. If the, the green is, uh, top, I'll just come in and bring in a, a little bit of warm into that, and that, that creates a vitality in, in the pigment. So uh, a lot of the complementary colors, and the same with uh, the lighter and darker colors that we're coming in and placing something lighter and then something darker. I want, I want to, I'm trying to get on to myself. Uh, keep finding different answers. Uh, don't just repeat the same color uh, over and over again. And while we've got that now, we can bring this in here. Touch to this a time or two. Okay. Uh, 
the green is is softly changes into a blue violet to a warm i'm going to find these things as much as i can not by painting the tree limbs and the tree trunks but by painting negative shape i'm going to paint between the limbs so what's left will be the limbs the same in the flowers the same uh there so i know for sure our sky is dry i'm gonna Rewet this. I probably will paint the sky two or three times to get it the right value. The sky's uh, one day I want to do a demo on sky paintings. It's something I've been doing a lot of skyscapes here lately. Uh, but here the sky is very much a background player. Uh, and I'm just going to use this cerulean blue and I've just neutralized it a bit by putting some of that in there, whatever that is. And we'll, we'll come in with the lightest wash of the, and I'm expecting this to be uh, a value or two darker. Uh, but we're starting lighter and then we ease off of it and darken it as we feel necessary. The whole job of the sky is to show off the light on the church. Um, it's not quite as wet as I thought I had it. Uh, And maybe I'll try just putting a little bit of a gray tone in there. And see if, how that does. Now that we've gotten the light uh, in my classes, in my new five and a half hour video that you're going to love. <laughs> uh, we're placing the lightest lights, the darkest darks in on and around the center of attention. Okay. Uh, I kind of checked to see uh, these things are still damp. And I, I want to find some harder edges now, so I'm, I'm searching for, uh, for some drier areas. Mixing uh, that. Warm, neutral. This is another thing that I want to see. When you have an overhang, uh, let me hit it harder. When you have an overhang, that overhang generally is most effective uh, if it is warmer, or at least has some warm in it. The reason for that is the light hits the floor and bounces up. So if anything is uh, an overhang, it will catch uh, warmth in the top. So I'm coming back here and just touching in a bit more warm there. Uh, and it usually reads pretty well. Well, I've got that. I'll come in, wet down a time or two, and just bring in a few accents, uh, a little stronger 
into foliage. And then, do you notice that I <laughs> jump around a lot when I paint? And for a reason, I, I when I have the color on my brush, I try to counterbalance on the page. The blue that's in this violet is the same blue that is in the top of the page. I'm letting this be warmer and then allow that to go a little bit cooler there. Don't think the door is dark enough. I'm going to come in and just darken it a little bit. Some of that Prussian leaked across it always happens. And while we've got that in here, let's just a bit hard edged, but I'm all right with that. We may have to soften these uh, at some point, but that's all right. Oh, give me a different color now. Oh, another thing we can do, I mean, just get that a bit darker there. Another thing we can do is come in, uh, textural things, we come in and bring in some color and we clear a fingernail or, or, or uh, a palette knife some, and come in and just pull some lights out of it. And that will give uh, the impression of, of uh, fabric. There we go. All right. I think this is dry, it is. So we can at least begin to hint at some of the structure there. I don't know if the sky is dry and it's still a little damp. I'm, I'll save that. So we, we just come in. Now we begin to paint the drawing. I don't know if y'all can see the drawing, but I can. And this begins to give us a little in the way of structure in here. Because it's dry, all of these shapes are very cut out. So once I, and I, I'm not sure how much I want to emphasize them, I kind of want to sneak up on that. So I'm just kind of letting them blend away. Uh, and not find them entirely yet. Soften an edge or two occasionally, occasionally. Let's see. Hmm. negative space and soften and soften soften that a little bit Just these little, just, I'm, I'm taking, I don't want to use, boy, the worst thing you could do is come in with a loaded brush, 
of water. Notice when I paint, I always have tissues in my other hand and it's there specifically to get the water out. So it's just a damp brush. And that's what we come in and soften with just nibbling at the edge there. Same thing. Don't want it to be quite so cut out. There we go. All right. I've I don't know. I make up terms all the time. I call this sneaking up on the painting. I'm bouncing around the page, painting, gradually moving darker down the value scale. And, uh, and we'll, we'll Just let this blend out. A little decoration. Don't want to go too busy with it. Okay. That's enough of that for now. Let's work on the trees. No, excuse me, I need to blow my nose. All right, we're gonna start off with a nice green here. Uh, now this is foliage. When I put this green, down on the page. Let me show you this. When you're painting foliage, I don't know that this is always true, but I find it to be mostly true anyway. This is just Aurelian and uh, uh, Prussian. And that makes for beautiful green if we were painting a, a dress, for instance, while we're doing it, why don't we? But that, that is too uh, pure, I guess, for foliage. So what I find is if I take the complement, a red, or it doesn't have to be burnt sienna, any of these colors that warm, that when we mix those into the foliage, that begins to make a, a more natural green. So instead of that, here, let me, let me lighten it up before Jerry uh, gets on to me. So this, this makes for a more natural green uh, foliage. Okay. Uh, I wanted those trees nice and dark. I'm mixing burnt sienna. I don't know if y'all can see a lot of burnt sienna here. I want it quite dark. And even I'm going to add a little bit of magenta to that to, to neutralize it just a bit more. And it's dried, so it's real cut out. That's okay. Uh, we're going to soften them up a little bit once we get the shape built. Oh, the sky still hasn't dried. It's softening up. That might be a good thing though. Uh, 
if it turns out, then I'll, I'll uh, say I did it on purpose. <laughs> we have two bulldogs. They're not shy about letting you know. Uh, so we're gonna negative shape in the trees here. Not painting the tree trunk, so let me let me use that violet in here. I'm painting around them, and what's left is the tree trunk. Tom, are you out there? T H O M, Tom. We talked about that. The the, the utilizing the negative space to find as much as we can, as much as we can. Finding the flowers, not by painting them, but by painting around them. Trying to find every way possible to find different mixtures, different colors with these six colors. Don't want too much interest over here on the side. We're in the red zone. So we just let that go down. Do you need those two little dots there? They're beautiful, but they'll pull the eye over there. So uh, they, got, they have to go. Mm, too fussy, too fast. Okay, so look at the difference between this tree and, and this one. We are letting the colors blend, and that's called granulation. We'll certainly have a lesson on that. So you get these mingled colors that really are just what watercolor is all about. And now in the photograph, I really didn't care for that tree. Uh, the foliage in that tree. So we're just changing it uh, completely. And we're just going to come in and say, that's where the foliage is. And we're asking, and then that's what it. We're not trying to explain everything uh, to the viewer. I would come in and let that go. Uh, the strong cool there. And maybe a nice violet as well. Keep getting onto yourself. You know, <laughs> <but now. laughs> find another answer. Okay. Come 
gonna like that color. I'm gonna lose that green, except on the edges. And finding the limbs, not by painting them. Well, you painted that one, but painting around them. Nice and dark. I'm just gonna reach in here with just Prussian blue and touch that in a time or two. I like that little shape there, but I, my eye goes to it a bit too much. Okay. We'll let that come down pretty dark there. And then we'll have it cooler in here. Let's find another answer, a little green into that cool. I don't even know what I'm gonna get when I mix this. There's some kind of green there, very earthy green. But we mix it and put that in a time or two. Okay. Where the, uh, the trunks are in shadow, I'm mixing a cool here. Ah, that really should be dry before I do that. I'll use it somewhere else. Okay, we'll let this dry. I've got a hair dryer. I try not to use hair drying demonstration because it's, you know, one of the two or three worst sounds on the planet. I want this to be a bit softer, so I'm just coming in and pre wetting that. Maybe get it a little bit wetter. And is that too wet? Thicken up that paint. Is it too busy or is it okay? Pure. Some green. And we neutralize it a bit. Uh oh. Now what? It's all blending together there. No. level, isn't it? Oh, let me redo that. It's wet, so it should should come off reasonably well. And now let's get it wet, and we'll just strengthen that color so that it blend. It doesn't blend quite so much. That's better. That's better. What is that, Don? 
Mm, I don't need those little beautiful light greens. Let's put some blue in there and make that go. That's better. And when it, when it works on one side, I come in, <laughs> you know, let's do it again. Mm, I kind of like that. I, I don't want to get too involved there, here. This, uh, this is working well, but a little too hard edged, a little too much. And actually, I could go ahead and, and uh, pull a, a cool gray, this tertiary color for the shadow. We don't want these to be. There we go. Let all of that just blend together. And now I wanted, let me get a little brush to have some speckled light there. Negative shape. And all that cool, I then come in and stick a, just a touch of warm in there. And why don't we let her come on down here and let the, that shadow tie her to the ground. When you're painting figures, always tie them to the ground with shadows, nice, big, strong shadows. Oh, I wanted that small brush. There it is. Painting the hints of the tile. Don't want to paint them all, but little hints of uh, the speckled light of the tile. That hurt. Just making. some hint and then get rid of, of most of it. Don't want to, too much down there. Keep that foreground nice and calm. Don't want the viewer caught in the foreground. We talk a lot about that in my new video on design. Did I happen to mention that I have a new video? <laughs> Design. 
And one of the things we talk about there is the foreground. It has a job to do. Its job is to lead the viewer to the interest, not be the interest. A nice violet down here. I don't know if that's too much. I like those little negative shapes. But sometimes, as Martha can tell you, I can love it till I love it to death. I want them to blend away, not be so important. Down here in the in the corner of the painting, let's just let that all blend together. See, look how that one little light just is beautiful, but it's too beautiful. It, it demands too much attention. Softening an edge, edge or two, edge, let that blend away while the paint's wet. Oh, uh, you know, I get involved in all of this and I forget that you, there are people out there <laughs> and with, I don't have not even a clue what, what, uh, time it is, but uh, it's time for me to give people a chance to get up for a minute. I, that's one of the things I've realized very quickly in Zooming is uh, you can't concentrate, uh, but for a certain amount of time. So We've got more to do. I always like that on it, and it cleans up the edges. We're we're getting there though. Uh, but, but there we go. Let's. I don't want to. You know. Uh, little things. Little things. Yeah. Why don't we take a nice 10 minute break uh, and then we'll come back and finish her up. We'll talk a bit more. All right, 10 minutes. Okay. And now, I think this is a better value. Maybe it's it uh, is uh, blending a bit too much, but better too much than not enough. And I'm going to do the same thing over here uh, and just let it go down the value scale. These are supporting casts, certainly. And even though I like them, I don't want them to take over and have too much attention. This also is a little hard edged in here. What, why don't you do that, Don? So we come in and just blend it a little bit, soften it a little bit. Try to get rid of those little holes of light that uh, busy everything up. Get to the... Now, I want to get to the grill work. The grill work was not in the photograph. Martha, it's uh, in the doorway. The doorways a dominant area of the painting 
And so I want to jazz it up. And I, I didn't speak about that as much as I should have in our, uh, I look for when, when we, we go to a location, it will have many areas of, of interest, uh, lots of good things that uh, invite us to uh, Oh, geez, I can't, can't paint talk. Okay, Don, what are you trying to say? The subject matter always has some things of interest, but then it, it won't have everything. One of the things I really love about, uh, Central American countries is the beautiful things they do with iron and wrought iron and, and clay and all of these things. And so uh, I try to incorporate them. That does, it is part of the joy of being in those Latin countries. It's what they, those wonderful. Uh, pots and the wonderful wrought iron railings and all of those things and chandeliers, my goodness. Uh, and then we look at the the, uh, the doorway in the uh, church that we're painting now, and it's not there. It's kind of bland. So I give myself permission to jazz up uh, and uh, add to uh, things that I like that I think are indicative of the of the subject that didn't happen to be there this time. Kind of making a hint of an abstraction. I'm about to go darker, but I don't want to go darker in here all at once. And and now darker still, just jabbing it in there, letting it blend, jabbing it in there, went nice and dark. I might even put a little bit of black in there. This is a good place for the black to be. Uh, I've heard people say don't use black, but we make such a big deal over the light. Why, why, uh, why not have a little black in there as well? I don't know. It's Everybody's different. This is, uh, now that I put those darks in here, the the uh, ironwork is standing out a little bit too much. And, uh, and what I mean there is that I didn't hit that first gray uh, strong enough. Uh, it was, there was the same problem on the door, but I darkened the door, but I didn't darken the, uh, the wrought iron there. So I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll just bring a, 
another gray wash across it. Just jamming it in. Well, we've got it there. Just let that couple of couple of notes of dark. This is black again. And we'll just come in. Find a little hat on one. Try to make, give as much variety as I can here. The light shirt works, the light dress works. A little bit pure. I'm just coming in with kind of dirty water and taking that off of white just a little bit. I like to just play around with the textures on the dresses and things like that. And we'll, we'll do the same thing. How can we make that different? We do this way and this way. There we go. And also, pre-wet, pre-wet, get it damp, and then bring the strong pigment to it, and then let it blend a little bit. Let it blend just a little. Ah, ah, uh-oh, door's getting bigger. Come on, oh, geez. <laughs> oh, painting, why do we do it? There we go. I have to just make the arch come out a little bit more. Is that a good idea? Maybe a little less. Maybe a little less. And while we've got the dark there, let's want to have the strongest darks pointing to the subject. Actually, now I love this about watercolor when it works out. 
I'm over here doing the painting. And while I'm doing that, this is blended kind of out of focus and just hinted some change. And that's so much better than I could have ever done. Uh, but I get the credit for it. And, and I really like that. <laughs> and people say, how did you do that? And I, oh, I'll, I'll just say, oh, uh, I, I've been practicing that. Okay. Now, I need to let these figures also melt into the steps with shadows. All right. Uh, I keep looking at this guy. I'm sorry, what is a color I haven't used? I guess I could say dark green. Uh, I don't want it to be the same as this, but. Uh, and I don't want, oh! don't want them to have the same color on this what I'm trying to get at. I'll just stick a little, oh my goodness, poor fella. That hat's starting to bug me too. Let me just tilt it a little bit. And then, there we go. Okay, is that dried here? No, it's still wet, okay. We're not too far away, everybody. Uh, I wanna firm up. Try to match these up as best I can. See how that warm uh, reflected light works pretty well there. I like that. Just gonna bring these a little darker. Some hints of What not? Uh -huh. Softening a few edges. Let's see, quite a bit darker on top here. And I'm gonna hit that warmer as well, right in here and in here. I don't 
Mm, that's a hint of a light there. Maybe we'll throw it just a hint of the shadow on the wall. Hmm. How much detail I never know. But the good thing is, is if you get too much up here, you can always. I could take it out right now. And, and also soften it up so. All right, let me make a gray, a cooler gray. And just to make sure, I'm going to just hit that. And we'll just ease it down, ease it down, ease it down. Okay, now we can put some darks in there. You think it's dark until you put something even darker in it. It's not dark anymore. Okay, now let me soften that up a little bit. And why don't we see what a yellow will do in there? Play around with it. And if we don't like it, we get rid of it. But let's just drop it in there and see. Do we like that? I'm going to say I do. I'm not sure. Just the right amount. Boy, this must be boring to look at all these little picky things. But they do help. Oh, he's got a long arm, but. And. What in the world is that, huh? No. Yeah. Just looking for a few 
darker areas in the supporting characters. The best darks I want to be here. Ah, I like this, but it's too hard edged and too demanding over here in the corner. This probably is too. Uh, I am getting very close to uh, finish and uh, I have no idea what time it is. I know that some of you have questions uh, and uh, I want to save a few minutes for that. Is that enough detail on this? Never know. I'm going to put a mat on it, and uh, and that always finishes it a little better. I like to say I don't know who invented mats, but they we should build a shrine to them. I've never put a mat on a painting that it didn't look better. Okay, let me step back and look. Uh, there must be some way to mess this up. I, I can usually find it. Uh, just a little bit more. What is it I want to do there? They, they have columns and columns. I want to show her off of just a little more of darkness. These little changes that happen at the end, little adjustments that happen at the end. It doesn't just fall off the brush. These little tickles. She only has one leg, poor thing. Let him be in shadow there. I'm considering just darkening the sky a little bit more and I'm trying to talk myself out of it. I need, I, what I'm getting at, I guess, is I'm, I wanna have a, a, a little more contrast. Uh, maybe this darkening this will give us that. And actually, it kind of does. Uh, it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah. And maybe this. 
something here. Let's let's show that off just a little bit more. I like that little window there. Look at my photograph. And it has this little wet it down, then just touch into it. Let that run down. Let that run down. And perhaps we can just have a little note on the bottom as well. I feel pretty good about the painting, the light. Do you see how the light's working well in the dominant area of the painting? The figures seem to be uh, working well. I'm going to say that I've never done a painting where I couldn't always find something else to do. But I feel pretty good about it.